Hey, good morning, YouTubers, and God bless you today. This is Steve Bradley coming to you from the God Loves People YouTube channel with another Bible study. And this Bible study is about creation and revelation. And so our opening verse is the beginning verse of the Bible. In the beginning, God created. And again, from Exodus chapter 20, verse 11, the Lord created the heavens and the earth and all that is in them. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 basically says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and empty, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved, that is, hovered or brooded, upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Now literally that is, light came to be, or light came into existence. It's the simplest way of saying that in the Hebrew language. Now Paul makes reference to this when he says God commanded light to shine out of the darkness. So we find here that God is the creator not only of the universe, but of all of its energies. And this passage shows God doing four different things. First, he prepares the earth for its purpose. And second, he molds the formless into the sculptured. Thirdly, he prepares the earth for life as the spirit moves over the, wa over the face of the waters. And then he creates the source of energy that shape our planet and the entire universe and gives them life and reality. Now there are some conclusions that we can draw pretty easily from this passage and the first thing is that we can understand that life and light are from God. He spoke light into existence. It has to come from him. These processes that he speaks of are natural forward slash spiritual processes set in motion by the power of the Almighty. Just as God created everything else, all the energy in the universe and all the life force in the universe comes from him and at his command. Without him, nothing is there. Without him, everything is formless and empty. Without him, the universe is an empty thing. In fact, it doesn't exist. Without him, there is no light, only darkness. Without him, there is no life. And so God, according to the scriptures, is both life and light. The devil, on the other hand, is death and darkness. Now, these are premises. We might call them presuppositions of the Bible. And the scriptures really don't explain how they are true. They just define them as such, and they offer no proof. In fact, God almost says, I'm not going to prove this, but here's how it really happened. Now that's what the Bible is saying here. We also draw the following conclusions. The Bible focuses on the earth and what's in it. It starts out with God created the heavens and the earth, and then all of a sudden the earth, and that's the next phrase, was without form and void. And from that point on, everything relates to the earth. While the universe is important, and certainly important to God, the Bible's focus is on what is here, not what is out there. Now, the truths in the Bible are revealed. We would not know them except in barest outline without the scriptures to tell us about them. In other words, we wouldn't understand how the world was made. We wouldn't understand how it came into existence. And we cannot expect to learn very much about God from investigating the world we live in. So God gave us two books, not just the creation, but also a second book by which we can know him. He gave us the book of nature, that's the first one, the creation, and then he gave us the Bible. Nature is what we can observe on our own. If we go outside and look, at, look around 
and think about the order of things and the beauty of things and how things just kind of seem to come into existence. The plants come up every spring and so on. That is nature. And we can tell that there's order and something that happens there that gives it life. And our minds and our hearts often tell us that didn't just happen. The second revelation of God is the revelation in the Bible. And the Bible is what God has revealed to us specifically about himself and the world we live in. Now these two complement one another and properly understood, they don't conflict. In fact, one of the Psalms specifically points out this difference between observation and revelation and divides itself logically into two parts. The first part begins at nine, chapter 19, verse 1. So at Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God and the sky shows its handiwork. So you can go out and you can look at the stars and you can say, wow, God must be really big. God must be great. God's amazing. And all of verses 2 to 6 talk about God's creation. The second part starts in verse 7, and it talks about the instruction, the Torah of the Lord, the law. And it says, the law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. And then verses 7 through 11 go on to discuss the benefits of knowing God's revelation. So we have these two books, the book of creation, the book of revelation. The first part tells us that God's creation informs. You can know God's power and define nature through what he's made. You can look out there and you can say, God must be great. He must be amazing, must be awesome. The second part of the psalm tells us God's revelation transforms and blesses. It does more than tell us. It converts, it restores, it changes, and it renews us. Everywhere the concept of revelation from God is mentioned, the Bible clearly says that it is God's word to us, his revelation. You cannot understand and know God merely through going outside and looking at the world around. He must reveal himself to us, and he has set it up that way. And he has revealed himself to us. Now the next slide shows us how he's done that. So how does God reveal himself? Well, he's revealed himself in the Bible, as we said, but there is an agent in that revelation. And God has given that revelational process to one person, his son, Jesus Christ, who is his last word. In fact, the, go the Gospel of John opens with the words, in the beginning was the word. And then it goes down a little further and then it, he says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten one of God. And then he says, No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has explained him. And nobody else can explain God but Jesus, the Son of God. So in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, we read this, God who at many times and in many ways spoke in times past through the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son. And that literally is in Son. So God, in the person of the Son, spoke to us. He spoke to us by his Son, whom he has appointed the heir of all things, by whom he also made the worlds. In doing this, God is not trying to withhold or restrict the truth. Instead, it's true that he is spirit and he seeks us to worship him in spirit and in truth. You have to be a truth seeker. You have to seek the face of God. You have to try to find him. And sometimes, of course, he just finds you. But that's what happened to me. But very often, we must seek God 
in order to find him. So God is looking for you. The question is, do you qualify to receive God's revelation? And we find that God reveals himself specifically to certain people. Jesus put it this way in Matthew 11, 25 through 27. He said, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent, the smartest people in the world, and you've revealed them to babes, that is, the little people, the people who are seeking the truth of God. He said, Further, all things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. In other words, the Son, Jesus Christ, is the agent who reveals God to mankind. You want to know the Father? Seek the Son. He reveals God the Father. Now you qualify to know the Father if you seek the Father sincerely through the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. And when you seek, he reveals. Jeremiah said, you shall, you shall search for me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. God desires you to seek him. And you should do that today if you haven't already begun to do so. God bless you today. And please do find me on Google, Facebook, Twitter, and subscribe for more videos and Bible studies. And God bless you in a wonderful way on this day of our Lord, 2016.